So the question was asked, that does, does someone receive blessings just by looking at the mandala? And the answer is yes. This is a uh, pictorial representation of the mansion or Buddha field of the Buddha of Compassion. So everything about it is meant to bring into our mind stream uh, the reality of uh, the perfection of the practice of compassion. So just looking at the mandala brings compassion into our mind streams. Therefore, a week from now, a month from now, when someone acts in an unkind fashion towards us, um, Anger may arise in our mind stream, but the antidote is also in our mind stream. The antidote, this pictorial representation of the antidote, which is compassion, arises in our mind stream as, a, uh, as an antidote to the feelings of anger. <laughs> Yeah, it could be that there would be slight uh, uh, tonal variances in the colors, yeah. Sure. So the question was asked about the destruction of the mandala. So that will occur tomorrow at 1 p.m. The Vajra Master, my teacher, um, the Lama who is applying sand right now, the green sand from mandala, will take this object. This is what's known as a Vajra, or in Tibetan you call it a Dorje. Um, vajra means diamond, so it's representative of the nature of our minds in ancient times when they were trying to um, to find an analogy for the nature of our wisdom mind, the innate nature of our wisdom mind, they came up with the analogy of a diamond. Because a diamond is indestructible, just like our wisdom mind. And uh, a diamond can cut through anything. So it can cut through any type of discursive thoughts, it can cut through any negative emotions like hatred or anger, any of that stuff. Um, and it itself can, can never be destroyed. Uh, and in addition, um, uh, the diamond, no matter how much mud you pour on top of the diamond and how you bury it or anything, if you apply the antidote, pure water, uh, the, uh, the mud will wash away and the clarity and beauty of the diamond remains intact. So he'll take this implement, the Vajra, and he will literally sweep it across the breadth of the mandala, uh, creating the first initial stroke in its ritual destruction. Then he, along with the other monks, will take brushes and sweep the sand off into some type of container. Then they'll carry it around back across the street to the bay, uh, and uh, they'll do a blessing ceremony in which uh, the, the blessed sand, which represents the bit of compassion, uh, all the compassion and blessings will then be poured into Tampa Bay, bringing healing and compassion to the Tampa Bay area. And then as waters mix with waters, um, those blessings will go and disperse throughout the entire planet. There is eight petals in the center around the tree, and I see a whole of gold weapons here. Yeah, the, the tree represents uh, Chenrezig, represents the Lotus family, and then, yes, yeah, the tree represents the Lotus family, that's in the center. The other four foot of families are in the four cardinal points. Yeah, so, so three in the center for Chenrezig and his Lotus family, and then uh, Om is another uh, Buddha family, and then Hong is another Buddha family, Tom, and then uh, Ah. Those are the five Buddha families. At 4.30, um, uh, Country Tarkin will give a presentation on the symbolism of the uh, five Buddha families. Various sizes, that's right. Yeah, they can be very big. Yeah. Uh, Rinpoche was actually, my teacher was actually telling us that there was a huge mandala created, not with sand, but with 
beans, because it was so big, sand would have been impractical. Uh, but it was absolutely enormous. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to describe the size. It sounded like multiple football 